autumn is already upon us up here at almost 1600 meters near the summit of Hachimantai. Allow me to show you some of my favorite, really accessible spots up here to experience the fall. Hi, this is Quinlan. Today I'm up here on Mount Moko in Hachimantai, and this is one of those easy little hikes that takes about 20-25 minutes, but the rewards are just fantastic. In this video, I want to talk about some of the locations that you can enjoy, the fall colors, and I'll just take you on a little walk around Hachimantai, one of the really family-friendly, casual places that um, is incredibly accessible and yet still stunningly beautiful. I always talk about Hachimantai. Part of that is because I live in Morioka, which is right next to Hachimantai, and part of it is because there are so many accessible, gorgeous spots that you can get to up here. Whether you have a car or just have to rely on buses, you can still get to some of the most breathtaking locations for just an easy day trip up here. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, where the whole city is filled with um, beautiful, big, deciduous trees. And so you don't really have to drive out into the country there to see and enjoy the fall colors. But in most Japanese cities, sadly, including Morioka, there aren't that many trees in the city and the uh, parks are not as numerous as one might hope. And so you do kind of have to get out into the countryside around this season to enjoy the riot of color that the mountains are erupting into here. Unlike Wisconsin though, it's just completely volcanic and mountainous and so you get to enjoy a whole nother level of colors. It's not just a flat forest, but just mountainsides with patches of red and orange and yellow. And the people here love it. And so on weekends, places are just packed. Mount Mitsishi, which uh, is one of the most famous places for seeing fall colors early in the season, is already just erupting in color. Um, look at this, how it was two days ago. Today is a Saturday, and the parking lot for the trailhead to Mount Mitsishi, I was told, was packed full, no spaces, at 3 a.m. That's how serious local people are about going and seeing these colors. And so if you're up here and you do want to see the fall colors, be careful of weekends um, or use mass transit because it's gonna be packed. One way that I found to sort of avoid this, if you have the luxury of doing it this way, is to go late. People like to go early, show up, see it, and uh, climb back down by mid-afternoon. I found that by showing up late, I can dodge a lot of the crowds because most people like to go down before it gets too late in the afternoon, which is generally good advice when you're hiking. Down lower, the leaves have yet to change, but up here at uh, around 1,500 meters, it's uh, already happening. I'm here at the summit of Mount Moko, which is my favorite super casual place to hike here in Hachimantai because it's literally less than a kilometer. I believe it's 900 meters from the trailhead to the summit of the little, little mountain, but it's really beautiful and worth hiking. And also it's never as crowded as the main area of Hachimantai. Though the main area of Hachimantai is great and you shouldn't miss it, still this area is often overlooked. And a lot of people who have been to Hachimantai a dozen times have never bothered to just walk to the other side of the road go down about a kilometer or two and do this little hike, which is so worth it. I mean, look at the colors around the side of this mountain right now. It's just spectacular. And the nice thing is that you just zip up here in 25 or 30 minutes if you're incredibly slow, 45 minutes. So regardless of how leisurely you take it, you can be up and down in an hour and a half at the absolute maximum. Nice place to sit up here for a picnic too. But there are more places I want to show you today. Let's go to the main area in Hachimantai, huh? I'm right here now at the entrance to the main Hachimantai summit area. And there's this really nice map here, which has times instead of distances written, which is actually really handy. There's a paid parking lot here, and just a five minute walk down is a free one. And you just walk up a stone and stairway. There's a number of ways you can do the loops. The actual summit is way up here. Um, but as you can see, that takes all of 25 minutes 
to reach. So this whole area is really casual, but as we'll see in a few minutes, the little ponds here, Kagami Numa, which becomes the Dragon Eye in early June, Gama Numa, Hachiman Numa Pond, these are all really gorgeous. And you can spend the night at the Ryuunso evacuation hut. It's not manned, it's just an empty hut. I'll show you inside. This whole area for, as you can see, it really doesn't take long. 25 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes, and you can do any number of loops in half an hour or an hour. Let's go see. Usually you want to be down out of the mountains by the time it gets this close to dusk. But one of the great things about Hachimantai is that you're so close to the parking lot at all times that being here at this time in the evening, just around 5 p.m. a little after, isn't dangerous. You can zip back 15, 20 minutes from just about any point. But most people don't linger when it gets this dim. And so you've got this entire atmosphere all to yourself when you come here. Look at this. Another great thing about this Hachimantai area is that pretty much the entire summit area is either paved with stone or has these nice wooden boardwalks. And so people come here in all manner of footwear. You don't need hiking shoes. People come here in sandals making it all the more accessible and family friendly. But look at this, this whole area is filled with these alpine wetlands. The season is done, but if you come here in the middle of the summer, you can see little carnivorous plants, sort of the Japanese equivalent of honeydew, if you're familiar with them. This area is perfect on clear, sunny days, and it's perfect when you're lost in the clouds and the mists, like today. Here we're reaching the edge of Hachiman Numa, or Hachiman Pond. You can see behind me this sort of golden grass. There's a word in Japanese, koyo, which literally is the Japanese characters, the kanji for red and leaves, koyo. And this is the way that they express the changing of the leaves in the fall, koyo. Let's go see koyo. The koyo this year is beautiful. There's another term called kusa koyo, which is used to describe the landscape here near the summit of Mount Hachimantai. Kusa means grass. And so this grass is, of course, during the summer, a nice bright green, but now, in the early autumn, it all changes this golden color and then to a darker brown. And this is called the coloring of the grasses, the kusakoyo. And it's also beautiful. Though if you do come up here to Hachimantai, the summit area, and walk around Hachiman Pond, as one does, please don't forget to go to the other side of the road. And if you don't have a car, walk the extra kilometer down to the trailhead of Mount Moko and go up there because the colors there are just amazing. I love Hachimantai, but there's not many deciduous trees up here, and so you just want to go down to Mount Muko within walking distance to see those bright reds and oranges. It's such an easy hike, you can bring the whole family, you got a five-year-old kid, no problem. To be honest, I think this area might be one of the strongest selling points for living in Morioka, or an area right near Morioka, to have this paradise within casual day-tripping distance. Just a little over an hour drive away. When you're walking in the clouds, the trees appear as ghosts. It's getting darker. This is Hachiman Pond. Now, Shrouded in mists. This is the lodge up here on the shores of Hachiman Pond. There's a wood burning stove and bathrooms inside, but no water. 
I'll show you briefly. Oh, it sounds like there's some people inside. So I don't want to intrude too much, but I'll just show you what it looks like. Well, it looks like they got the wood burning stove going. It's pitch black inside there, and so I can't really show you inside there, but it looks like there's about five people spending the night. They got the wood burning stove going, having a party, drinking. Looks like fun, huh? If you're gonna take the bus or a car up here to Hachimantai, and there are buses, you can find English language bus schedules that'll take you from Hachimantai, or in fact, sometimes all the way from Morioka Station up to the summit of here. But if you're doing that, you wanna buy snacks and food and drinks before you go, because there's really not much up here. There's a place called the Mountaintop Rest House, which is closed right now because of the pandemic, but even when it's open, they've got a little gift shop and a vending machine, but there's not really much in the way of food. And so I recommend stopping at a supermarket or convenience store um, near the station, near Morioka Station, before you head up here, regardless of how you get here. But you don't need much. You can come up here in casual clothing. Just remember, it's a good 5 to 10 degrees Celsius cooler than it's going to be down in Morioka. And so make sure you bring a windbreaker or something, even if it's a hot day. You may need it. Also, weather changes quickly. And so it's not a bad idea to always have something that can work as a raincoat with you. This area here, the summit of Mount Hachimantai and the Mokodake area are a perfect place for everyone to go, and I'm sort of a broken record here, but it really is nice. Most of the places I take you in my videos are a little bit more rigorous, a little bit more strenuous. They're uh, a bit extreme and not really for everyone, but this here is for everyone. So what are you waiting for? Come. If you like my videos and enjoy the drone footage and some of the stories, then please consider helping me continue doing this by supporting me on Patreon. There's a link in the description. And by um, supporting me monthly, you'll have access to some more photos and videos and at some levels even uh, wallpapers of some of the photos that I take. Also, I have a uh, Teespring shop and so you can buy things like hooded sweatshirts and t-shirts with the Go North logo on them in order to help support the channel. Link is also in the description. Thanks so much for your help. I'm Quinlan on Instagram and Go North J on Twitter. Okay, I'm losing light, it's getting dark, and no matter how easy it is to get back to the parking lot, there's no sense waiting here until it gets pitch black. So I'm gonna start heading back. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the trails.